now. Okay. Now we're live. Uh, hello, everybody. And we just met Christina. Christina, would you like to share your, ex your experiences if you like? I mean, you're now on record if you, if you mind, don't mind. Okay. Well, I mean, I've had experiences since I was very young. I mean, um, it's hard. I mean, I'm, I'm not into the same realm as Nicholas, and I'm sure many of you are. And I'm not really even sure what kind of how I'm supposed to speak or if there's a certain way. But I think a lot of my experiences were more spiritual. Uh -huh. And I always had angels surrounding me and my children. And I think my children were born through me to save me, if that makes sense. But oh. I've had, um, yeah, I've had very scary experiences throughout my whole life. I sometimes feel like I've lived probably 20 lives already, and I'm going to be 49 this year. So it's, it's, I'm going through a lot right now. I, I've had issues with my husband um, who has had pancreatic cancer, actually, in oh, wow. his library. He has no pancreas at all now and has been cancer-free for five years. Uh -huh. But there is some dark cloud over him that really holding me back in my life right now. And um, I, I'm, I live in Connecticut. I mean, in Myrtle Beach. I'm sorry, in Myrtle Beach. Uh -huh. And I live with my younger children, Joseph, who's 16, going through a lot with him right now, too. And my daughter, 14, Gabriella, those are my two younger children. Then I have Nicholas and Tanya, who live around this area, Connecticut and New York. So I have this, this really big problem where I've been in Myrtle Beach for five years now. Uh -huh. And every one of my family is here in Connecticut. And I traveled back and forth. My dad's sick. He has cirrhosis. So I came in here and helped them a lot. But as soon as, and I have to go back to Myrtle Beach tomorrow. And uh -huh. I'm really having a hard time with that. You know, I know this is a little bit out of what we're supposed to be talking about. But um, I think my experiences come through when I'm having these hard times in my life that I try to meditate. And I'm not sure if I'm even doing it the right way. But it seems like as soon as I do go to that place and I try to disconnect from all that other stuff that's going around me, that things always seem to fall into place. As much as I'm in a lot of pain and I have a lot of stuff going on. And also, Nicholas has been helping me so much lately. Even before I came here to Connecticut to see him, he was calling me the week before, and we talked for like probably five, six hours on the phone. And, huh? Yeah, and he told me about you, and I actually just went to his website, and I also told a couple friends already, and they're also very interested in my friend John that Nicholas spoke about, Santa Claus, is just so excited about this and wants to help him get really involved. Um, so, I mean, that's just a little bit about what's going on right now in my life. I mean, obviously, I can talk all day. Let me grab the microphone right now. So, okay. yes, I, I hear you. I mean, we all go through that. Right. And you go through that as a strong person. You're trying to help. Right. And feel like it's, it's all yours. It's all these uh, trials. I, I'm in translating from Russian to English. All these tests. All these troubles, all these pains are yours. Everybody around needs you. What do you do in that case? How do you take it as a light worker? I come from a rabbi family, well, many generations of rabbis, and I know a little bit. Of, I, I know nothing about you know their lives directly. I didn't meet them, but I know in you know for ten centuries they were rabbis. Many, many generations, like over twenty generations. And just look at the rabbis. What do they do? They Celebrate births, marry people, celebrate births, gives uh, no, officiate circumcision, uh, and then they uh, mourn deaths. And that is their daily job. Every day somebody is married, somebody is born, and somebody born and somebody, you know, somebody dies almost every day. There was a number like thirty over hundred thousand people die every day in, on earth. But some of them are close to you. That is uh, so, you know, one of the uh, secrets of being anyone, in the, uh, any official in the church, how do you call it, any religious officiator, is to help people without going down yourself. Yes. 
And the same thing with surgeons, doctors, anybody in, in the medical uh, industry, a medical profession, you know, a healer, actually somebody came in, hey, somebody, we are welcome you. Uh, a healer is, uh, is, suppo is supposed, the secret of the healing is to help others without being hurt. Yeah. <laughs> So one hand you treat, and another hand you protect yourself. That's sort of, you know, that's an image. You give healing. Actually, give healing with my left hand, but right hand I protect myself. That sort of thing. You know, anything negative doesn't come my way, and positive I send yeah. healing. I feel right now the energy. I'm sending healing to you. I feel it going from this hand, uh, but at the same time I protect myself from all the trouble. So that's kind of duality, dichotomy where you have to. Be on the guard at the same time, be helping. So many of the things have nothing to do with you. It's not trial for you, not a test. It is something that other people go through, and you just play as successful as you can. You can help others without going down yourself. That's my my you know single, you know, simplified, overly simplified yes. you know, answer in typical station. Hello, I think the care came through. And you online you have ten people. Let me see who is there. Lainey, Gabriel, Ayan, uh, Justin, Jody, Hi. Uh, Ravi, uh, Christina, and Nicholas, Suresh. Uh, Nicholas, could you mute yourself for now? And when you're not speaking, please mute yourself. And we still have a. All right, I'm, I'll shut up. Hello. I wish I knew the language, Liran language. You already know how is hello in, in Liran, but I forgot. Hello. Blessing. One moment. Laini and Gabriel, you will go first, if you don't mind, and then after that, in, in the same order, Ayan, Jaguar, Jordi. All right. Christina. Christina, you can unmute yourself. You're speaking to Aliran. Yes. Take strength in your daughter, Gabriella. Yeah. She brings you strength, correct? Yes. That is where you will find your strength now. There are many things happening in your world. I heard you <laughs> speaking, and I came to speak directly to you. Your strength is in Gabriella. However, you say there are dark clouds everywhere around your husband and father and parental figures that are alive. Yes. When you wake up in the morning, how do you feel when you try to get out of your bed? A lot of pain. Yes. We will work with that first, because that is the beginning of your day. It starts your attitude. It starts your... Everything about the day starts when you get out. Does that make sense to you? Yes. You can change the atmosphere in your household. Before you get out of bed, lay there and think about the blessings that you have. I have told this to others, but in your case it will be very beneficial as well. You must give thanks for those things that are blessings to you for a few minutes before you even step out of bed lay there and think about the goodness that you have that you are have a husband and children and things are good in many ways then when you give thanks the these things that you have given thanks for to your gods, to the spirit guides, to your higher self, then they will start working for you in a way that is different. 
because they have been appreciated and they will return their appreciation to you in many ways. Does this make sense to you? Yes, sir. Yes. Your husband's dark cloud, after he has been very ill, he feels incomplete at this time for some reason. I am not sure why. But there is something in him that feels incomplete. In he needs to be more satisfied with his life. It appears that there is something missing. Is that what you are getting from him? Yes. He is to find... One moment. I would like you to do something for him. Okay. Point out his good points to him. And there are many, I am sure. Try to bring up his energy level. His diet is not as it should be at this time. Is yeah. this Sure. He needs to take a day and just drink liquids. I do not know if you will be able to do this or convince him that this is a good idea, but this will get rid of many toxins in his body, which are also bringing him down. Do you have a question? No, I, I think, um, well, you just made a lot of sense to me because that's one of the things before I came to Connecticut and left him with my son Joey that I was um, trying to do what you said and, and bringing up some positive points and um, also really trying to get on him about the diet without trying to you know, be overwhelming because he's also diabetic. And the thing is, is he's really addicted to sugar. Yes. And he was a drug addict at one point, and now he takes Suboxone, which is another form of an addiction. And, um, you know, he's not, he's losing a lot of weight, and he's not very healthy, and he's not, he's on disability, but he's overworking, and he's trying to do anything to distract him from the reality. You know what I mean? The so, yes. of your day will affect the outcome of many of these things. Mm -hmm. When you get out of bed with pain, you are not in the highest point to help. Right. And therefore, when you do give thanks, and when these things start helping you more, they will be helping everyone. Does this make sense to you? Yes, yes. Your ability to help him is great. But only when your spirit is in the right place, when your thanksgiving and pain is under control, I will be sending energy as well to you. Thank you. For your Thank you. relief, because much of your pain comes from emotional damage, because you are so stressed. The pain is not all truly physical, but some is mental, which has caused physical. Does this make sense to you? Yes. Nick, you are understanding of these things. Pray with her on these things. Yes. I you will. have much energy within you to help her. Please, and you have already done so. She has already brought her spirit back to almost normal at your residence. But she needs to keep this going when she leaves. Is this correct? Yes. Yes. I came to speak to you. Thank you. Thank you very much.
I will speak to others as well. Go in peace and remember to be thankful. Thanks. Yes. And then the pain relief will be forthcoming. There will be less pain. Yay. <laughs> I yeah. hope so. Thanks, Kurt. Believe it. Believe okay. it. Who has Ah, oh, Max, I sense that you have an organizational plan. Uh, it's vague, but uh, Suresh is new. I would invite Suresh to speak. Suresh, greetings. Unmute yourself. All right, Suresh is not there. Uh, there is one more person. Jody, you're new, uh, and you unmute, so you can Hello. speak. Oh, now, Jody, you're on mute. Hello. Yes. Suresh, oh, Suresh. Jody, uh, hold on, hello. Suresh is back. Suresh, hello. Hello. Hello, Max. Yes, hello. hello, Tucker. Jeez. My first time, actually. Welcome. Uh, I, I have a question. Um, uh, I would like to know uh, who was I before uh, my physical uh, uh, my physical body here on earth who was I before and I, I want to know that and I also like to know my vibrational frequency if it's it, okay why is this important for you I must ask this first hmm there is uh, I'm not sure but uh, I think uh, Uh, I I I I feel uh, like I'm uh, you know uh, imprisoned kind of uh, feeling inside this human vessel, and uh, I, I I feel like a prisoner, uh, and I I also have like a violent uh, violent uh, uh, emotional swings and imbalance, and I I feel very uh, very emotional at times, and I feel these kind of feelings going up and down. Why do I feel that? Yes, it is very common for you to feel this when you come from a higher plane into the human existence. Many call it crystal or indigo, children or beings which, which have, I would have you look that up and rather than me try to ex explain it. Look up crystal children or indigo children, but you are from a different existence before this. You were from a fifth dimensional civilization, which you have lived several lives. This body and this life is for you to learn third dimensional habits and thoughts because you cannot be a great leader or a spirit to those on earth if you do not understand what the earthly existence is like. However, you have been on earth before, but this time it is to become fully human so that you can understand how to teach a human and how to be not condescending from a higher level. Does this make sense to you? Yes, yes, it does make sense to me. So please, yes, you must control your anger. You must learn that being trapped in this body, you began as a spirit, of course. Try to find the spirit within you and bring that to the surface. Because when your spirit surfaces, it permeates the entire being. Does that make sense to you? Your meditations must be yes. bring the spirit to the surface. Because then, when it reaches the surface, it moves outward. 
and this will be when you are enlightened and you will know the full dimension of the third and understand it with love and understanding and goodness and joy I cannot bring it any clearer let's move to the next uh, one, one more clarification oh, is right. that, uh, yes just a clarification uh, you said uh, you, uh, I came from somewhere in the fifth uh, dimensional plane uh, pla which was that I mean is there a planet or is there any kind of a place what kind of realm is that the realm of the fifth dimension has brighter colors and greater di dimensional aspects than you can possibly imagine here on earth transcendence is what they would call it in some ways that you are in a body but yet you are also a spirit free and I cannot explain. I am in fourth dimension, so I cannot tell you exactly about fifth dimension until you get there again. But I know of it, and I have seen it, but I have not experienced it. It is a marvelous realm. Okay. You were very glad right. to know that. And uh, one more thing. It was from Andromeda area. Wait. Okay. No. Taurus area. You said Taurus. Taurus oh. area. That realm. All right, um, Georgia, and, uh, may I know? May I also know my vibrational frequency at the moment now? Uh, vibrational frequencies of this distance are not always accurate. We have learned this from Lakesh, but you would be in the realm of four. Jody, are you there? Thank you very much. You're on mute and I can see you, Jody. Me? Can you see me? I can Thank hear you. Sir. Thank you. You, you can hear me now? Yes, yes. we can hear you. Hi, Jody. Hello. Hello. Is my microphone okay? I mean, is my camera yeah. okay? That's camera is not, but that's okay. You can speak. You see me? Oh, okay. Um. I want to say thank you to uh, Max and Jim for all you do, and thank you so much to Kerr for taking care of us and the planet. I just wanted to give out so much thanks for that. Sometimes it just overwhelms me when I think about how much you take care of us. So thank you for that. And uh, my uh, first question is: Do you uh, how do you handle like unruly teenagers? Do you have um, is there a way like say if you if a child is uh, like running away and and lying and stealing and things like that, do you have that on your planet? I doubt that you do, but I was just wondering how do you handle uh, like rebelliousness in teenagers? We have always discovered that when someone in our close proximity is misbehaving and doing negative things, it starts with ourselves. We must do a self-examination before we can reach out okay. and help others. Okay. It is not that you are doing bad things, but they may be sensing something within you or seeing an action that is not an action that they see correctly. Does that make sense to you? Yes. The child or teenager... Mm -hmm is rebelling because they feel that they know more about themselves than you know about them, which is true to some extent. Do you understand? Yes, I understand. They say to themselves, I know me, but they do not. Right. 
but they do not know themselves yet because they have not challenged themselves as responsible beings yet. Okay. However, you must take introspection. You must find what it is in you that they are seeing as something they are rebelling against as well. They are not always rebelling just for the sake of rebellion. Mm -hmm. But there is something happening in the household or something happening within proximity of the home that is causing them to run even further and do even more damage. So therefore, my first thought for you is to take you and your significant other mm -hmm. and do introspection and speak to each other mm -hmm. about what it is in you that they see that is not correct. And it may not be something terrible, but it may be understood. Do you understand? Yes, yes, I do. And that I makes... think this will help. Okay. Um, I had another question. Um, this one has to do with my mother. I just found out the other day that um, she had a visitation when she was about 19. And um, she said she was laying in her bed and um, she looked over and she saw uh, someone standing there in the doorway. Yeah. A tall, tall being with a round head and the square shoulders. And yeah. she got scared and put the covers over her head <laughs> until the morning. And so I just wanted to ask for her, you know, because um, I've never had an experience. And so um, I just wanted to know who was that who visited her. It was a Pleiadian. I do not know the name of the Pleiadian. However, okay. she was not meant to see him. Mm -hmm. Actually, it was her. He, she was not meant to see her. Mm -hmm. And if she would like to know more about that experience, I can check more deeply. But it was a visitation because she has an implant. Oh, okay. All right. Do I have any implants? One moment. Yes. Oh, okay. Where is it? Behind the right ear. Okay. Uh, who put it there? Pleiadians from Grokfrick near. Oh, very good. Do they do they visit me often? They visit you, but not as often as they visited your mother. Oh. Is there a reason why that is? Yes. But why? I cannot tell you what it is at this time. Oh, okay. All but right. you and will then... find out through the course of communications. Oh, I wonderful. just asked for her, does Jody has children or brothers and sisters up there? Hmm? I'm asking Tucker if you have children or brothers and sisters up there in a space and physical. Um, yes, I have a brother and also I have a sister that um, passed away in 2006 and I, I feel her presence around me often. I'm sorry, I, I meant... Uh, in the hybridization program, they take people and uh, create children from them and put them up there in a space on other planets. So I'm asking if you, I'm asking Takur if oh. you have uh, children or siblings uh, up there in the space. Oh, okay. Jody does not, but her mother does. So wow. Wow. How many? Just one. Son? Son. How old is he? In Earth years. Eighty-four. Uh, and uh, is he on error? Is he is he with Pleiadians? No, eighty-two. I'm sorry. It doesn't matter for us. Wow, that's that's awesome. <laughs> 
84 with Pleiadians, right? 82. 82 Earthlings. With Pleiadians? It doesn't matter. All right. 82 for them is very little. It's like 30 for us. They live about 300 years old. Wow. Wow. That's awesome. And then I, my last question, um, I was walking down the stairs, um, and my daughter heard something behind me walking down the steps, and I was wondering, was that anything, or was she just hearing things? You are not alone at times. It could have been. I do not know if it was. Okay. But it definitely could have been someone. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. I want to Jaguar for speak. Jaguar, are you there and can you speak? Yes. Hello. Hello. Greetings, Tucker. Greetings. How well, are you today? Fine. And yourself? I'm okay. Thank you. He has given me strength to continue. <laughs> Tucker? Yes. Are you able to locate me? I know where you are. It's very good. I understand your current position and your uh, role is to look over uh, the United States. Is that correct? Yes. Is there uh, someone in um, my proximity that could be of support and guidance? Yes, but not yet. Understood. You will find support, but not quite yet. There is something that must happen for support to be found. May I ask what that is? You must find it because it is your destiny, and I cannot tell you where to look or why. Understood. But you know why already. Hmm. But do not puzzle on it. It will come more naturally than that. Mm -hmm. Just let your life be what it is and live it to your fullest right now, and mm -hmm. things will happen for you. Mm -hmm. Understood. Can you give me some specific advice on how to improve uh, my lifestyle regarding uh, nutrition, diet, and uh, the environment I live in? the space, the location, should I move, should I stay in the city I'm in? Stay right where you are at this time, but when mm -hmm. you are before you eat anything, look at what you are eating and discover what it is. Think about the food that it is. If it is wheat, if it is animal flesh, Think of what you are eating and let it resonate with your body. Do you understand? Hmm. This will give you an idea of what you need for yourself. There are certain nutrients that are necessary, hmm. but you are not getting them with the food that you are now eating. Go to your store and walk the aisles and let things vibrate with your senses that you may need to eat. Hmm. You have the ability to find positive food sources for what you need. Do you understand? Yes. Let them resonate with you. If they do not resonate, when you hold them and look at them, you may be hungry for this food, but if it does not resonate with you, I would not eat it at this time. 
Understood. Thank you. You are welcome. I will help you with that. I will send out resonating energy for food source. Thank you, Tukur. Blessings. Blessings. Blessings to you. Thank you. Tucker, yes. are you in a position to take more questions? See, I feel you're getting tired. There is some interference, but I can take one more question or two. All right. For those of you who already asked questions, I suggest you uh, exit from here and just go into watch mode on, on the site so others can join and at least have an experience of being present. Um, anybody has urgent questions to occur? There is an urgent question. Where is it? There is Carolyn, Gabriel, Hayan, Caitlin, uh, Ravi, and others already spoke. Hi, I don't have a question. I just wanted to say I tried drawing you last night to occur. <laughs> Thank you. You just popped in my head, so I was like, Maybe I should draw her. <laughs> Thank you much. It is flattery. You're welcome. Thank you. There is an urgent question from a male. Where? There's Gabriel and Hagan and Robin. Is it Greetings, Tika. Hello, Dakar. Yes. Someone has an question. One of those. I have a question about the heart. Yes. I would like to find out and discover more about living in the heart and the void that contains the universe within the heart. Yes. The heart is an important chakra and area of the human self. As you know, it's the center. It's the beginning. It's everything comes and beats at the heart. From high to low. Do you understand? It is the fourth. Three down and three up. The fourth. Yes, in both directions. The heart that you speak of is massive. It is love, compassion, joy, hope, the future, the destiny, the telepathy. All these things start here at the center and move out. Although you start from the root, and work to the head. Yes. When you're dealing with the universe and Mother Earth, the heart is the center. Does this make sense? Yes. Find your grounding on your path. You need to be grounded so that the heart can take more energy from the Earth. You have plenty of energy coming down from the universe, but you're living more in this space. And you need to bring things up and ground yourself. There are many elements in the sacral and solar plexus that you are working with. However, your root chakra needs to be fed from the earth. And this will give you a better understanding of your heart chakra. Did this make any sense to you? That makes perfect sense. I would like to know how to be more connected to, to my root chakra and the grounding techniques. Picture yourself as a tree. And you're putting your roots into the earth deeply. Do you understand? And when you do this, you get nourishment from the earth. You pull it up into your body. And this becomes your trunk. And you have limbs and leaves. You cannot live unless you are a bird 
in the branches completely. You must have the roots in the ground. Therefore, bring your roots into the ground and bring the energy up from there. Can you imagine this? Yes. This will help. That's great advice. I have one last question. Yes. Do we have a second heart that is fourth dimensional? Interesting question. <laughs> and let me answer with this. There are some that have developed a fourth dimensional heart. It is rare, but yes, it does happen. These are the people that are moving quickly through their vibrations and they have got to have the fourth dimensional created heart to keep the balance. Does that make sense to you? Yeah, totally. It's the balance between the vibration moving so quickly and you also have a second dimensional heart as well because it has to be balanced. Does that make sense to you? Those people moving through vibrations so quickly must have those temporary additions. But they will all come together here. As I understand up line, there are hybrid children that do have second, that do have two hearts. And I was wondering if we do have a, uh, this fourth dimensional one as well. So that, that brings great clarity. Thank you very much. Very good. It is only a temporary situation because the hearts will move as you come to a understanding of enlightenment. They will all come back to this third dimension. Can I, can I do a follow-up question, the curve? Yes. Uh, when you want to focus on healing your chakras, yes. do you, is it uh, appropriate to think of each chakra and have a, if it's, if, if you want to heal the sacral chakra, do you maybe think of relationships that that have uh, gone bad and traumas with relationships uh, and you know s special special things to think about for each chakra there are ways to enhance the chakras that do not co come from negative thought think of it this way the, the chakras are colored you know this. Yes. If you would like to enhance your chakras, you can do that in many ways. If you, the red, the orange, the yellow, if you bring these colors into your life, even looking at them, can strengthen your chakras. Also, if you have... Just by energizing them. Yes, that is energizing them. Also with certain stones. You can energize chakral areas with stones of that particular color. Yellow stones for the solar plexus, red stones for the root. Do you make does this make sense? Even though they may have other their color energy comes from these areas so you may use these stones as empowerment because they have other reasons for existing and this could be one of the reasons that your chakras are weakened so you need the power of the stone and the intention of the stone for each chakra does that make sense to you yes yes very easy Yes. So if you were to reflect positively 
on your chakras, saying that the root is your connection to earth, and think of all the connections to earth that are positive. This also is a way to brighten and encourage and enlighten your chakras. Take the intent of the chakra and dwell on that, and it will become more a part of who you are. It will brighten your spirit as well, and your chakras will balance. Yeah. Why I ask this question is because I felt or learned that if you, if you just energize an unbalanced chakra, it will, it will, will uh, wouldn't work. Yes, it will work. I'm just giving you greater ways to make them even stronger. And uh, one other thing about um, vortices and places with, uh, you know, vortex energy. Do we have anything close by Sweden? Sweden has vortexes, yes. Every country has at least one, except for there are two very small countries that do not have any. Yeah. Can you name, can you name anything in Sweden? Is the island? There, yes, near a fjord. Near a fjord. I cannot give you the name at this time, but it is near the coast. Uh, the west coast or east coast? The west coast, yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know where now? Yeah, I felt it. Very good. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Yes. That is right, correct, yes. Mm. Any... Any chakra, chakra place in Europe? There is... You know, like Hawaii is heart, the heart chakra. The heart chakra is in Hawaii. Yeah. Anything in Europe? There are other chakras, but they are not the heart chakra. There is only one heart place, and that is Hawaii. Yes. Any other chakras? Uh, in Europe, maybe? Yes, there are other chakras in Europe. But that is not what you need to know right now. Yeah, all right. You can develop your chakras without these places. They can be dangerous if used wrongly. And therefore, I do not... The heart chakra is the safest. I must go soon. Is there any more important questions? Yes, uh, Tucker, if I may. Yes. Is the mystery of how uh, I have this ability to speak Liren already uh, clear, or is it still a mystery? It is not a mystery any longer. Is that information correct to be shared, or should we discuss it in private? It was not from Gruk Vikneer. However, there is <laughs> the element of the Lightworkers Federation who are doing this to help with first contact. Okay. That... Um connects with another question that is uh, Lakesh told us that uh, my role is to somehow be a different kind of light worker. Are you able and is it correct to clarify what this means? If I were to tell you that then you would know what to do next and you must do it on your own. Understood. Thank you.
Thank you, Jacob. I must go now. Blessings to all of you. Goodbye. Bye, sir. Do so what you Greeting. Farewell. Farewell. Do what? Hello. Hey, Jim. Is it Jim or Lakesh? Hey, I'm Lakesh. Oh, hey, Lakesh. <laughs> I'm only here for a moment. But I wanted to say hello. I did. I saw that there were many people here. I wanted to say greetings. Hello. Everybody Hi, say greetings. Hello. Yes. Hello, Lakesh. Greetings, Lakesh. Hello, Lakesh. Oh, there's so much love, yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. I have so much happiness with you. Many of you are doing very well. And if you are not doing very well, you are trying to do very well. <laughs> <laughs> there's someone who has a question for me, specifically for Lakesh. Anybody has a question specifically for Lakesh? Lani never spoke. Okay, go ahead. Please do. I'm only here for a couple minutes. Please hurry. Hello, Lakesh. Yes. How's it going? I am well. Um, I just want to say thank you. Um, I, I've, I've been communicating with you this week a little bit. Yes. And um, I I don't I I literally I'm now completely in the fourth dimension in my spirit and in my life. Yes, in many senses. Yes, you are. Yeah. Um, and now the 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 experiences that you told me about that my experiences are being stretched. Yes. Uh, I I understand now what you mean, and now I have allowed myself to have visions, uh, clear ones, and then right after I have them, they're confirmed. Um, yes. I've been asking for remembrance of my dreams. I even came up with a uh, little poem uh, to make yourself get in the state of remembrance before you go to sleep. Um, <laughs> um, and I just... And my mother has a question for you. Yeah. you know, I had a question about eleven eleven. It just happens that my birthday is eleven eleven, but I've had experiences with the number eleven eleven throughout my life. But it seems like when mostly in that period of um uh, uh maybe depression or when things are not going so good, all of a sudden it's like I'm here or something, you know, the number eleven eleven is always prominent in my life. Yes. The reason for that is 1111 is all ones, of course. But one is a beginning. And when you draw on ones for beginnings, you have the beginnings of... You must be positive when you draw on them, okay? Be very positive. Do not enter a thought of 1111 with negative thoughts because it will bring four negative beginnings, not four positive beginnings. But, you see, sometimes there is only one because they, they mesh together. But that is to be understood at a later time. You must understand that you have many beginnings with 1111. Yeah. And, but it means... It also goes to four, which you understand as well. But 
How do I say this? You have been the creator of some of your own negative beginnings, but you've also been the creator of some of your very positive beginnings. So when you think of 1111, please be very positive. Be very positive, and if negative wants to creep in, please push it away. Does that make any sense to you? Yes, absolutely. Is it a sign? It is a destiny, yes. Okay. Thank you. You will find things changing soon. Thank you. Sephira is Hey, Sephira. <laughs> Hello, Sephira. Sephira, can you hear us? Uh-huh. Liney, you didn't speak ever. Yeah, I'm here. Hello. Hey, Liney. Hello. Hello, Luke. Hello. Hello. How um, are you doing? Yeah, not too bad, thanks. How are you? That's good. I sense that you're in a, a state of fairly well-being. Yeah, not too bad. Not too bad. <laughs> not too good. I'm okay. No, you're just okay, yes. Yeah. Um, the things that are bothering you, you do not wish to speak about. Um, no, obviously. No. Um, right, oh, I've just got a couple of little things. Um, was William visited last weekend, probably that last Sunday night or something? Yes, you were. Yes. Do you know who? Um, he called it a baby alien. <laughs> Pardon me? Um, William. I didn't hear what you said. I said, um, I, I said, was William um, visited last Sunday night? Yes. I think, yeah. Okay. And um, he called it um, a baby alien. Baby oh. alien. It is the vision that they give him, so he will not be afraid. Okay. Do you know why they do visit him? Just checking up on him, or...? Yes, they like him. He's a wonderful spirit. He is a, a future light worker, and uh, there is no concern. He, they are not m malevolent. They are only there for his protection. And I know that you get very concerned about this. Um, if you do not want them to come, you may say, tell them not to. Oh no, I'm, I'm happy. No, no, no. Yeah, that, uh, they're more than welcome. Yeah. Yes, uh, they are. So they will good. come if you allow it. Yes. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Um, yes. Okay. And the baby alien tells him things that are of his age level and are not negative. They are not controlling him. No. Oh no no that that's good. He um no he he kind of said to me then the following morning he said mom he said do you remember the baby alien? I said yeah I said oh I said did did they come to see you last night? And he said yeah. So I said what did yes. he say? And he said something about oh you, William you're in my heart or something like that stuff that he would say. Yes. Very good. Yeah so quite sweet. Um just one other question. Um when I was with the Andromedans a few years ago. We um, were talking, they told me stuff, agreements I had with them, um, yeah. and I can't really remember what they said to me, and they asked me if I had done a few things, and I can't remember what it was they said to my... This is an agreement with you and the Andromedans, and uh, uh, they wish that I not be involved in that. So, that is between you and them. And I, I cannot tell you what they said. They will return and, and give you the information once again. But that will be to you and them because they feel a personal attachment to you. So I will not get involved with that conversation. However, they find you interesting and they find you, well, they will tell you. <laughs> okay. Can't wait. Yes, they will be back. There will be a time when you are more ready for them and their information. Yes. All right. All right. I understand. Cool. It is time for me to visit my granddaughter. 
Right. Um, I spend much time with her lately. <laughs> uh, say hi to her and have fun. Yes. Thank you for the uh, visit. Uh, it was a pleasure to have you in such a nice mood. Yes, I am in very nice mood today, and I hope all will have joy. Everybody say bye to bye bye. Bye bye, bye, bye. Lakesh. Bye. Bye. Bye bye. Uh, okay. Hey, Jim. Everybody say hi to Jim. <laughs> Hello, Jim. Hi. Hi, Jim. Hi, Jim. There's a lot of people there. Hi, Jim. I asked some people to exit, but now we have nine, so there is one more space for entrance for anyone. Hello, Jim. Welcome back. Thank you. Thank you. I just got in, so I missed the whole thing, but I was watching most of it. Oh, very good. That mm. was Samira, yes. Hello. Yes. Oh, oh. Wow. Okay. You want a drink? Yes. I can give you that. <laughs> <laughs> I should have brought my drink over. No, thank you. All right. So, what do we get? I have tons of things and I forgot all of them. Um, one of the problems is that now we have more than 10 people usually who wants to speak and, you know, but it's not too many, it's maybe 11 or, you know, 14. It's never hard, it's really hard to predict how to, who will come and uh, I obviously wanted more of the people who speak languages and somehow uh, Sabrina didn't make it and um, there were a couple more who speak languages and they didn't speak. Uh, That's okay. <laughs> Nick was Nick speaks uh, Arcturian and some uh, something else, but uh, he didn't speak today. There was other more important things, maybe I guess. So I was thinking, how can we can we play that? One of the ideas was to make it paid, but you know, again, if it's paid, there is so much responsibility. Then you know, I have to keep track who paid and. I tried to send invitations out, and that that system is not set up for well for invitation. Invitations <laughs> don't come, and so so it's a lot of trouble. So I'm thinking for the uh, next webinar, we probably will combine uh, Skype and uh, Skype audio, Skype and video hangout. So so in comments, uh, tell me you know uh, your Skype name, or if I can send it by email to me. So I will try to connect to you by Skype. And uh, by Hangout, so people, not everybody will have a chance to speak, but at least everybody will uh, have an experience of being in a session where they can speak to, to, uh, to an alien. I think it's it's uh, the experience even more important than you know than what is spoken. Yeah. That was one thinking. Uh, of course, uh, I would be I would love if you guys organized and. Uh, Collected through, uh, connected through video Skype yourselves in a group, and then I would get one connection, so I don't have to officiate the connection because it's it's a hassle. At the moment, it's uh, difficult to you know you have to if somebody calls you cannot you know it's really hard to bring them to the group conversation. I have to basically you know call them back and add them to the group conversation. So it's a it's a hassle. So what do they have to do? Um, if you can get on 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 the hangouts, thank you for asking. If you can get on hangouts. Join me on Skype, but you have to be to tell me in advance so I can kind of connect you through Skype. Oh, okay. So if you're going to go to Skype, you have to tell them in advance with your name. And Skype yes, and yes. Thank so, you. So, um, and if you're just going to be at the Hangout, then you can just see. And, and then you have a chance not okay. to be able I to understand. make it because there is only ten spaces. Yeah, there's only ten spaces, and they fill up. And also, I uh, I uh, think it worked well. So if you finished with your questions, you exit from uh, from that um, hangout, so others can can join. What is that? I don't know. Somebody is doing something. That's okay. <laughs> I can leave with that. Um, the attack, and it's not. It wasn't that actually the single attack. It was more like a continuous. Um, uh, how do you call this? Um, now, two two things. One was a clear attack last time, fr uh, Friday night. Uh, I guess the reptilians just crushed uh, a significant file on the site, so to slow down our project. So 
it looked like it was a natural. It certainly, for humans to crash that file would be difficult. For them, it would be easier to hide the site than to crash the file because it was clearly corrupted. But for aliens, I think it's pretty easy to crash the file. So the, one of the files with the users on the site was corrupted, so the whole experience, you know, you know we had the hour, hour, one hour later started, and it was stressful. And uh, it, I, I couldn't get access to the site, so the whole Saturday and the beginning of Sunday I was trying to get to regain my access to the site, and finally I did, but it's really hard when a site is corrupt. And even to restore it from the backup was, was, was difficult because it was corrupted. Uh, and another trouble, apparently for the last two months, we have, there was a hole in the site, and we got 8,000 fake users, which slowed the site tremendously. And so these are not real humans who attack us. These are uh, sp uh, spam bots which try to advertise things. So. You know, just negative humans write the spam bots, and they find the holes in, on all sides and put their their advertisements. And this time, I didn't even see advertisements, but I saw lots of fake users which didn't do anything. They just kind of just uh, sw swelled the, the site, so the site became huge. Uh, there were tons of other things. There was a question about we discussed many things. A uh, question about the health and what do we do with Healing. There was a question about uh, heart chakra. Somebody commented there. Please, please join the discussion. Um, this is Jim. I I can't. <laughs> <laughs> no, I can't answer it to her to ask like ask questions because I don't have the information. So, but but uh, Jim. Yes. Jim, did you find out why your name kept coming up on my phone? My, why what? Do, do you know, I, I sent you an email during the week about your contact details kept coming up before my email each time. Oh, I have no idea. I didn't ask that. No, I didn't. All right. Um, no, it's, it's not important. Um, it's, it's just interesting that it was your name and you wasn't my last, the last contact I put in. And your name kept oh, okay. Up nearly every time I use my emails. Really? That's wild. It is really, because it's never happened before. No. So I, just, well, I just thought maybe someone's trying to tell me something, you know, that I've got Ooh. questions I need to ask, or I don't really know. Strange. I'll ask for cash when I... Uh, that, that is something that I'll ask. Okay, thanks. No problem. So, I will give, I'll get with him to find out. Do you ladies have any... I have a couple ladies here in the room. That, does everybody know Diana and... Barbara. Hello. 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 And uh, do you have any questions? I'm sorry. Uh, no, I was just uh, pretty much listening to information he was given and stuff. Oh, good. He did a lot of stuff on um, how to ground, how to um, meditate, and use your chakras. That was um, helpful. Really. Oh, good. Yeah. Oh. Get out of bed. Uh huh. I'm always saying thank you for another day. Yep. Um, who was that? That was Takur. Oh, that was Takur. Oh, Takur. Yeah. 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 Takur was excellent with answering the questions on the heart. That was uh -huh. really good. Oh, there was good. one thing he didn't touch on, which was the void in the heart, which is the oh. tiny little space. I would have liked to go further on that one next time. Uh, ask him next. Her next time. It's a her. Yeah. Ask. Yeah, him I always get confused. Uh, she was. I think she was a little bit rushed up toward the end there. I was feeling that she was like trying to get through because she needed to get back. Because uh, they have a lot of work to do around the United States. There's many, many things happening. Um, Yellowstone National Park. Parts of it are becoming active again, volcanically and uh, seismically, and so. I know there's been many stories out there that said it, that the animals are leaving, and then there have people saying that the animals are coming back, and you just don't know what to believe. But they said that there are some areas of, uh, of Yellowstone National Park that are seismically active, and so they have to work on that because that was the site of the largest volcanic eruption on Earth. Do you know why it's so dangerous? 
Hmm? Still Do you know why it's so dangerous? Um, because the whole park was the volcano. It's yeah, the, it's also the consistency of the, the material. It's like glass, and it gets in the air, and it just shred people's lungs. Yes. And if, uh, yeah. I think some parts of it are blocked off at this time, but I'm not sure. I, the, I didn't get any af affirmation on that. But I did hear some news reports that said that the animals are coming back now, but I'm not sure if that's true or not, or if they're just trying to calm people down. Because it was said at first that the animals were leaving. And now a ranger came on TV and said, oh, they're coming back, they're coming back. So, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I wonder if they're just trying to calm everybody down. Yeah. Most likely. There's been um, some talk and discussion on internet chat and uh, talk to talk uh, radio about weather manipulation and now they know the humans are doing some of it but they're also now starting to see what what our friends are doing as well which is quite interesting and they're getting a little confused yes. but, um, but they are, that's yes, also very interesting they are doing some weather manipulation in our favor um, but not to change history or anything. They can't change it a great deal, but they can make it safer and less violent. Well, that's it. That's what they're saying. They say it should be more violent. Why is it not being like this? And something else is going on behind the scenes. That's what yes. they're... Exactly. Yeah, they're, they're noticing it now. We're the first to tell the world about them working with the weather. So. Well, not really. No. Oh, really? No. I thought we about were. these guys, Greg Fitnier didn't show up. So, but others, you know. Oh, really? I was speaking that. about it a lot. Oh, know. I thought they were the first to take. No, oh. But we were the first in many other cases. Oh. We were the first to collect alien poetry. I think that was the first. <laughs> we were first to collect alien languages. So we have several people talking, and uh, the fact that Jaguar spoke to uh, the Kerr, <laughs> I think that was or uh, Norma. Right. That didn't happen before. Yeah. We were the first to uh, get that scale human colony. Well, other human colonies in the past, but but this is volunteer one, the first volunteer human colony, and there's are several colonies, and it's an organized thing. Oh, okay. I have a uh, question. We didn't get all those first. <laughs> uh, then uh, the first colony created uh, telepaths. It's not our idea, but we were part in that process and we were standing by while they were creating it. So that is also the first thing that ever happened. Zafir, you had a question? Yes. Thank you, Jim. Yes, I did. Because I missed the first, well, the whole thing. <laughs> I missed the first hour and it was an hour. Um, okay. About the hybridization program, did, did Takur say that any of the material taken has already been tried out or used? Nobody I asked. wanted to ask, but uh, I didn't have a chance. Yes, uh, that would um, be important. Okay. Nobody <laughs> asked. Nobody oh, asked. Well, see, because I wasn't there, that's why. <laughs> yeah, you weren't there. Okay, hold on. I can... Actually, nobody's around right now. Nobody's around? All right. Um, I don't sense anybody anyway. Usually I get a sense that there's some there. movement, or <clears throat> my hair stands up a little bit. <laughs> but uh, not there's a lot of this stand up. But <laughs> every now and then. But uh, I don't get the sense <laughs> that anybody's around right now. I think that Takura had something important she had to do, and Lakesh is definitely with his granddaughter. And we are the first to have webinars like that. Oh. Nobody has, nobody is doing that. Oh, really? So okay. people can just come in and speak to. The, the galactic people. Uh, that is the first thing. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. So you are doing something historic right now. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, I so, didn't know that. So speaking about that, there is negativity coming. And uh, so that attack last Friday was very, uh, you know, for me it was a hit. I, I you know, I was under that uh, pressure and so far I felt protected, but now I'm sort of panicking and feeling less protected. So what should we do about that? Um, apparently, the, our website is sort of is uh, is not very stable. I have troubles every now and then, and my helpers, uh, site administrators, are helping once in a while, but but I, um, not enough. Uh, Slava did a, a lots of work, and last five days, Slava is a young 
kid from Russia. He he learned the English using our website. In the last half a year, he learned English from from zero to to freely communicating and writing. Um, so he did an excellent Whoa. job com compiling the, uh, the videos. Watch his videos. He compiled the, the languages video, which is extraordinary, and he compiled a couple more videos. Mm. And he's doing amazing work. And I know to compile it now, in what, he did it less than 20 hours. Uh, he, he learned the program, but also he did. He went through all our recordings, about 60% of our recordings, uh, annotated them on the site. So now we know where things are because finding things you can only through annotation through text. Otherwise, it's really you have to memorize it or annotate. So he did annotation. And with that uh, website attack where we had 8,000 fake users, he went and um, deleted them by hand, one, one by one. All right, 398 by 398, 19 times he did that. A lot of work, uh, thanks to Slava. But basically, I feel that we need backup sites. So one of the backup sites, uh, obviously, Rainbow Lights is first. Rainbow, rainbowlights.org, uh, created by our friend Michael Black from Czechia. Uh, it's a good site and I suggest you guys uh, join it and in case we go down that would be the first stop to go. Second site, three or five, five days ago uh, our friend Nick who was here a second ago um, started, uh, I had already the, the reg it registered, groundteam.org, groundteam.org. It's already alive. Join that site. Hopefully, if uh, I announce everybody, uh, we need system administrators to link users so you don't have to re register. We want to automatically transfer all user registrations from our site, humancolony.org, to groundteam.org and have them cross pollinate each other. So if anyone joins one site, we want it on the other side to be already registered. So we'll have two sites at least. And maybe the same thing with Rainbow Light. And but Nick started the site? Nick uh, is administering the groundteam.org oh, site. Oh, thank you, Nick. Thank you, Nick. Uh, and he's great. Uh, I really trust his uh, energy, and uh, he's capable. But really, all, all, of, those, all of those are sort of uh, a small-scale size. WordPress, we use WordPress as a hosting system, and it is you know, for about up to 2,000 people, but when it grow, and we have only under 200. Uh, so we have the space to grow, but basically, I think as we grow, we need to go to another system which is called NING, N-I-N-G, NING sites. And if you know this light worker sites, all of them are built on NING system, uh, mm -hmm. and most famous is Ashtar Command, and it has about 10,000 users, which is I assume that's about how many light workers are there, English speaking light workers. Mm -hmm. And there is um, the Federation of Light and uh, a Star Seed Network. And uh, this, these sites are about one to 2,000 users. And, uh, and that's how many light workers are around. That's, you know, that's, you know, we have few here and we have around few hundred, few thousand around, but that's about it. But it will grow. So, uh, I thought that you know to create a site, Ning site, it, it costs now about three hundred dollars a year. It's not too much, but we can't afford it. So if you guys can afford uh, paying three hundred dollars for registration for a year, we can start that site. Or maybe a few of you can uh, uh, bring money together and kind of start an Ning site. And this would be. Uh, Easier to join, it's easier to administrate, and it's kind of faster and uh, it's designed for larger crowds, like a few thousands. Uh, on. Uh, and another option is to uh, just pick one of the existing sites and join them. On the whole crowd, we go there and join them, so it will be our other, and we can create a group there. And okay. uh, the difference is here we are protected. Protected. If somebody bad comes, uh, I can easily knock them, knock them out. So we have a very protected environment. We are very friendly. On other sites like Ashtar Command, the crowd is kind of aggressive. Uh, really? Yeah, they are kind of light workers of aggressive type. You know, you come there and they say, <laughs> "My God, or my extraterrestrials." Much use for that than yours. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. Or whatever. I know. I know better. Or something like that. Or you know. Dogma happens everywhere, right? Dogma. No. It's everywhere. Some of, those, yeah, yeah. Yeah. some of those are better than others. So, um, Star Citizen Network is friendly, um, but pick the one. Pick the one. Let's vote. Pick the one and go there, and join um, it and create a group. Somewhere. That sounds really great. Uh huh. And yeah. if we go together, we can protect each other. Yes. Yeah. Thank you for saying that because actually a few channelings ago, Jim, uh, we were told about attacks also coming to us, and they said the most important thing is unity, unity. Stay exactly. together, pray together, support each other, and the unity between you and Max is utmost important because you're leading the, the whole thing. So you will both get attacks on your unity. You know, you start getting I, I don't know, you know what you know what I mean, right? It just happens where people get Person annoyed with each other or so. Personally I have not been attacked. Um I have Fission as my guide and he's been doing a great job, but we need to get Max more protected, I think. Yeah, I'm just I'm just talking generally about the importance of unity. Yeah, it, it 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 can come. Uh, disunity can come in very subtle ways. You won't oh, yeah. feel like, you won't feel attacked. You'll just like suddenly like somebody will start annoying the heck out of you, and you just or or separation. Just the t tendency or the temptation to yeah. separate will happen, and so I'm concerned about that. That the unity okay. stays really strong, you know, in that case. Yeah, anyway, yeah. whatever. Sorry, I was trying to teach anybody uh, anything. Thank you. You're yeah, in a very but. unstable situation. Uh, <laughs> all my situation. Uh, yeah. Jim can't pay for his rent. I can't pay for my uh, my um, whatever mortgage. I still for look for a job. Uh, the donations. Thank you for the donations. Uh, last week we got fifty dollars. A week before we got hundred dollars. And it helps to see that you know that you are supporting us. Unfortunately, it's, it's far from from <laughs> enough. Uh, right. Jim gets uh, channel sessions, and that pays a little bit. So we invite everybody. You got discount till uh, I, I forgot. I think it was thirty-five dollars an hour, uh, uh, half an hour till next Friday, coming Friday. Uh, sign up for the <laughs> session, personal sessions. Uh, next. Max is putting me on sale this week. That's a, yes, that's I put cool. Max Jim on sale. Uh, <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Wait, wait, I didn't hear the sale price. What's the sales price? Sales price? Five dollars per half an hour uh, discount. Oh. On sale. Sign it's, up. Gone it's gone up. Coming. It's gone we, up. That's now. We need the business to, <laughs> to speed up. Yeah. And then uh, as things pick up, we will go back to forty-five dollars per, per half an hour. <laughs> and this is only half an hour of. Pure channeling, and you can prorate it. In, uh, yes, that's if, if it's just change. because if you can't afford uh, that much, talk to me on Skype. Send me a message, and we'll talk. Okay, gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, and everybody, I've got to go. Thank you so much, Jim, for your channeling as always. Thank okay. you, Max, for being there and setting Thank everything you up. For being standing by. God bless everybody. You, talk to you soon. Okay, bye bye. Bye. <laughs> Bye. 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 Thank you, everybody. Oh, that's so sweet. Thank you. Bye. 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 <laughs> Rowie. This is Rowie. Um, Hello. Recently, Hi, come across, How are you? I'm really good. Um, good. good. I've recently come across another channeling group. Oh, good. And they are using the power of intention mm -hmm. in the trading market. And they are joining together with this guy who oh. channels a uh, guy called Jamal channels Ektar. And Ektar. Suppose, I think he's an Essasani. Oh. And um, basically what they do is they get in a trading room, they put money into this trading thing, and when Jamal says press trade and hit the button, you hit the button and he's got an eighty five to ninety percent win rate and they're earning hundreds upon hundreds of dollars a day. Um, I don't get it. Okay. Using the power of intention. Wow. With trading. Trading. So I'll we'll send you, you some mean links. Markets, uh, market, financial markets. Yes, that's correct. Oh, I think you know what? I was on. I was online last night, skyping with someone, and that came on about trading. I I don't know. It just came on. 
something. It, there was a big uh, black and blue triangle. It was like, and it was like. Uh, That's yes, that Sunny. Huh? That's yes, yes Sunny. That's Sunny, yes. Yeah, symbol, yeah. It was a big triangle with blue around the edges, I think. And they were talking about trading, uh, and that it's 90%. 90 to even sometimes higher effective. But I didn't know what they were talking about, but they were all talking about it. So I think she listens to the whole thing. I think it was me that sent you the link. Um, oh, yeah. okay. Yes. Yeah. I, yeah. So check the whole channeling out if you can spare the three hours to listen to it. Um, but it's very, very, very powerful. And it's... Yeah, it's post it on the side. How everybody yeah, can channel... Post it, post it. Yeah, post it on the site if you will. So basically, you know, to get into that, we need uh, to do a lot of homework. You can't really get there without understanding the system. Right. I never well, did. Well, I've opened my abundance up so much recently, and I've changed my attitudes, and it's starting to really, really explode and kick off. Just sometimes need a credit card now and again. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Very good. Thank I can you. I can share my experience job searching. So basically, my mantra is you know, go find the jobs and support us. Uh, so I uh, I was pretty successful in getting into interviews. Uh, the ways to do that basically is to set intention first, and then I I am I'm transforming for every interview, transforming for every job announcement. I'm transforming into that and really thinking of it. I don't really send it cold anymore. I read the announcement, I think how I can help them. If it's not for me, I wouldn't take it. But if I can transform into it, I transform, I write a individual application letter where I really explain how I can help them. And usually if it's an announcement for a job, I would take the whole announcement and comment on every line there. And apparently the if it goes to a uh, an, an HR human resources person, they love that style where you Take announcement and comment like they have blue. I put color blue announcement and black is my answer. I can contribute here and here and like four lines. What is my expertise there? They love that. And then I ch edit my resume to remove extra stuff and highlight my um, my my expertise where I can really contribute there. Uh, that is one and. Uh, Indeed, Indeed.com is the best site for job search, at least in my area of genomics and science. Uh, and also, not only that, it's it's pretty wide. It's Indeed.com is very convenient. Uh, and another one is LinkedIn. I uh, I grow my network. My network is about 1,000 people. And uh, I'm not afraid to connect to the people. Uh, even if I don't know them, I write, so I want to get to, to know you and blah, blah, blah. Uh, I want to connect to you, and um, basically I'm looking at places around, so I'm connected now. I know faces, I know who they are, and I think that is a great tool. LinkedIn is a great tool to build your network. And the next one is just your your address book and uh, calling your friends and you know and uh, understanding you have to do that. Basically, feeling that it is right to ask and say, you know, I'm not just asking for a favor. I am offering myself, so it's a fair trade. I will do my best to be good at the job. So I'm calling friends and asking them, and asking them how they are. And I, know, I mentioned, and at some point that I'm looking for a job. And few interviews just came through that, and I think it's one of the best. Like most successful interviews, just calling and remembering people. Sometimes I don't get their telephone, but I find them one way or another on the internet through other friends. And uh, searching for a job this way, I think. Uh, uh, I mean that's that's classical way of doing this. I wish you much much success, Max. Hope it works oh, out. You. Yes, we all do. For us, it's very different, and for my for me, I mean, being self-employed and finding a job, I haven't written a CV in over twenty years. Uh -huh. <laughs> How is your business going? It's changing, but um, I'm implementing the news, uh, the new interests I've been having, which is. 24/7 out the 24/7 income streams, multiple income streams, and so I can actually focus on the work I need to do rather than have to yes, work read, for it. I read what you wrote. Yes, I read 
about that. And I, I think I said something back, you have to give me more information or something like that. So I'll have to click on the link. Yeah, yeah, I'll put some stuff up on the site and um, hopefully people can take that in as well. It okay. comes over very, very, very strong, um, very confident, um, but if you're prepared for that, then I think you'd be okay. Yes, I it just started on mine. I didn't even click the link and it came up, so it was good. I was listening yeah, to Yeah, I said it at a certain time so you could miss out the first two hours of the channel. <laughs> yeah, the important bit. So the supernatural component of that is very interesting. Basically, what we learn is they are real. Uh, until until recently, it was we had like no proof. We had to go on uh, pure faith. That thing with uh, Jaguar speaking uh, Liron to to Takar, you can't fake it. it. Is it is as real as it could be? Okay. Yeah. Thank you, yeah. So, so the languages, that thing with miracle with languages, which happened. Actually, it started happening a long time ago when we first heard languages, when we first heard poetry. Again, you can, Jim can try that, that poetry just uh, improvising. Because sometimes, you remember that uh, poetry session with Lakesh where, and with um, Zachariah when I asked them to give me something on specific topic. I, imagine G Jim or Zachariah come, uh, uh, improvising on a specific topic, it's just impossible. And it was high level, high uh, quality poetry and high quality uh, blessings. Mm -hmm. You can't really invent that. These are, these are real. These, these guys on the other side in fourth dimension, they are real. But in a, in a way they are surreal. They are you have, they're, they're from different reality and and that reality is different from us and it doesn't manifest here. They basically they are Prohibited from manifesting here. In most cases, when I speak to you know to people up there, they uh, about my career, about business, they say we can't help you because you have to do it yourself. Otherwise, you wouldn't get the experience. So we are still in that predicament of you know learning. We are like here on the on the brim of poverty or beyond the brim of poverty, and we still are learning stuff. And uh, you know, I don't know why I attracted so much learning on that level. I wish to, to learn like more on the level of uh, not being poor. <laughs> um, Me too. <laughs> yeah, but, but but you know what? It's it's satisfying to know that we're on the right track. Anyway, I think. Uh huh. So so I <laughs> I uh, I go uh -huh. <laughs> I go on uh, say every new interview. I I really really want to get a job. And for me, it is, uh, in most cases, I have to learn a lot of stuff about around that area. So, um, you know, right now I'm learning about uh, senescence, which is a fancy word for aging, aging on a cellular level, on an organismic level. So, so next week I will be studying that. And next week I'm studying something else. And next week I'm studying something else. And for me, it's a huge learning experience. I'm transforming. Every, 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 for every new interview and job opportunity, I'm transforming a lot. And right now, I have a guess that maybe that job also will not work out. But I, I will have learned a lot of new stuff. So my learning experience is huge there. One thing is I learned is to play. Yeah, that's true. And I missed that uh -huh. when when searching for jobs. You really put yourself out there and uh, and and evolve. Uh, so, so, so one thing I learned, ex except in, in addition to science, I learned how to speak to people, you know, cold calls, not so cold calls, asking for introductions, quite, you know, barely warm introductions. You know, it's in the sales business, it's cold call when you call someone without knowing what it is. And, and, uh, okay, good. all right. I sent something. Ah. Mm, no, well, Gary. Yes, we have a uh, metaphysical group. Oh, cool. Yeah, that's a possibility. All right, people take away All right. Uh, so, so that's basically how to build a network, and and there is a lot of uh, supernatural component there. Uh, once in a while, I get strange emails, strange introductions. One of like last few days, I got. 
like a, a distant uh, acquaintance of my acquaintance would introduce me to someone and and that, that would raise my spirits like like uh, she was uh, approached on a conference she was approached and she's a quite established scientist and somebody said oh you're you're such and such and she said yes and she said oh you're a co-author of Max <laughs> <laughs> and, and for them Max is, is uh, you know one of the most yeah last week I got you know you're the most advanced in this area of biophotonics uh, you know actively working in that area yes I am mm -hmm. except I have zero money and you know on interview it's it's really, you know some of the business meetings I have to say yes I have a company you have that wonderful plan you submitted five grand application you submitted the patent and you have zero funding and they kind of close their their ears are like turned off they you know they they have their vision is blurred and they, they can't really take me seriously. I, know, I, I guess I have to learn to pretend that we have some money or something. <laughs> so that, that's my learning experience. How to create something out of nothing. I can put a lot of work, yes. I've got a question for you, being having a rush from history. Recently, I think in the last few years, there's been a discovery by the Russians. And it's uh, it basically predicts every photon's uh, quantum appearance in the future, which predicts our complete future. Do you know anything about this? Are you talking about Garyaev? Talking about what? Garyaev is the last name of the Peter Garyaev is the last name of the scientist. I mean, there are tons of discoveries. Uh, which one are you talking about? I, I don't know. I heard it um, somewhere, and I was I was really like, oh wow, is that's amazing. It's wave genetics is it? Talking about wave genetics, uh, photons, basically predicting photons and light, and predicting it in the future, and how everything's predetermined, and they've come up with a discovery. I don't know if you knew anything about it, or um, I tried to Google, but I couldn't find anything. Um, uh, if it is biophotons and related to DNA, then it would be Garyaev experiments. If it is something else, then I'm not sure. I, I'm in contact with Garyaev, Peter Garyaev, and there that that kind of line of research. Yeah, I thought you'd be a good person to ask. Mm -hmm. I'll try and find out more. I need to, I need more specifics. You know, yeah. I'm uh, I'm all into DNA and photons. If it is photons without DNA, then I would ignore that. <laughs> But also transdimensional things are very important. Um, basically, we live in a, yeah. One of the key things was that um, Takura came a few days ago on my personal session with Jim uh, and gave me an affirmation. That's called affirmation, which is I think is great and it was new to me. Uh, in English, it sounds be as it should be. It's very unusual for me, like mm -hmm. how to accept the you know as it should be. I'm always like, be my way, not as it is. Sh not not like sh should is typically mainstream, and I am alternative, so I'm going alternative way. But the case is more like mainstream uh, type of character. Be as should be is her Liran mantra, and it was in relation to health. And it gives a whole new perspective. In Liran, it sounds red. <laughs> hey, somebody speaks Liran. Rakesh. Yeah, red Rakesh. Red Rakesh. Or red Rakesh. Mm. Uh, um, I just posted this, the, the most recent video. Just go watch that most recent video. It's a mantra from uh, affirmation from Taka. So retro curse, which is be as should be, is it should be. So apparently there is a lot of distortions and there is a proper way of doing things, proper health state, and all these distortions are, you know, we can kind of put them back to track. But also, uh, she said it's four-dimensional, and that is another kind of uh, understanding. And four-dimension words mean more than than here and as far as you go farther to higher dimensions the affirmations become more more important and they manifest easier that's I guess that's the way okay. to go say 
affirmations. So all these fairy tales where affirmations were important are four dimensional kind of influence. The farther you go in the higher dimensions, the the words are more important. And the beginning of Bible, the word was was in the beginning. I think also it's like the higher you go, the 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 words are more important than you know, all these uh, tiny atoms and uh, minutiae minutia of uh, physicality becomes less important. So, and that's right. what Bashar says, you know, our world becomes more like a fairy tale, you know, different signs, different symbols, the dreams, and that sort of thing becomes more and more important. Ooh. Oh, okay. So, so so far uh, the, we, we were presented four dimension is you know it's a place where you can walk through walls <laughs> which I think is just you know too trivial you can just make doors and then we, mm -hmm. we don't need to walk through walls yeah. but uh, but the, the importance of uh, affirmations and prayers I think is uh, and the blessings I think I think that's well that's a sign of the fourth dimension okay. yeah, that makes sense to me anyway. So writing grand applications is is another form of affirmation. I say, I will make, give me that money, I will make that beautiful experiment, I will discover something new. And it's only me writing on the text, but there is a saying that by putting intention there and putting yourself in a mm -hmm. spot, you make the whole universe to help you. When oh, you say, yeah. I will do that, the universe kind of, complies, and that is the word conspires, conspire I think is the word, conspires to help you, or to go against you, it depends right. what you want. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm there for several years saying, here is what I want to do, I want to work on light and DNA, and, uh, and d d replace the drugs, over, over drug, over medicated uh, modern world with a more balanced kind of Reiki type of machine, where we use lasers to activate genes and regulate genes. Um, and I'm out there, but uh, I need help from the universe to help me there. So I need people to, who think alike, and I need uh, physical help just to mm -hmm. make it happen. We need the lab. You know, there is that barrier. You can't do it in your garage. You have to really be in, in the lab and doing experiments with mice and cell culture in a proper way. So, so that's the idea. Okay. Jim, I know you're bored, uh, <laughs> but you can you can do the you can do the uh, blessing uh, for us. Oh, um, a blessing for for uh, my experiments and for our financial situation, for our friends finding the jobs and getting their financial situation better, and for healing. What H? A B H. It would be it would be called B in the uh, American system. H okay. is in uh, European. Uh, oh, okay. Notes. On his musical instrument, he has A B C, but he, there's an H on there, and I'm going. I don't know of an H note. It's a B, B note in American system. Okay. Uh, H note. It's A B H C in, in European and American. I don't know. A B C B C D E F G. All right. Max. Are the same notes? Max. Uh, yes. Uh, can you, to to next time, uh, decide a website that uh, we could join and announce it uh, in the start of the video? All right. Um, so, rainbowlight.org, rainbowlight.org, uh, I will announce it again. It's Michael's, but that, uh, that, that would be number one. Rainbowlights.org. Uh, yes. Rainbowlights.org. Yep. The second one, uh, I will announce that. But but that's uh, no up to Michael. He's running it. I'm inviting Michael to announce it again. Okay. Rainbowlights.org. Uh, second side is groundteam.org. It's still in that's pieces, uh, and, and I I invite Nick to. Uh, to announce it and help invite people. But basically, I'm inviting now system administrators like Peter and others who, are help, who wish to help set up the system so we don't need to, uh, for, for you individually to go and register. We can just link the site so all the users from my site 
uh, will be automatically registered there, so it will be easier easier for everybody to, to go between the sites. And I'm inviting also everybody to discuss on our site uh, where on which of the Lightworkers NINC sites is most friendly for us and where we could uh, join. I think the best thing is to have some of their organizers to welcome us and uh, we can speak to them. So you can go to your favorite site and say, I have this group of people who want a second landing place and uh, would you welcome uh, our guys to join your site? And we'll get to create our group on the NINC site. But uh, I want you to be more proactive. I'm searching for a job and, and it's like full-time work. The fact that I had to do that. Yeah, and I'm and I'm inviting two people to yeah. you know talk to each other and interact on your on, on the website because it's it's uh, the first step to to talk to each other. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So talk to each other more, share stories more, and, and yeah. yes, please do. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, and I just thought of a question. Um, is there other uh, federations or something like Gurfiknir around the planet? And maybe those who are attracted to this site is uh, resonating with uh, Gurfiknir. Federation of Light Workers and the World Federation of what, what's that one called? There's another one with the word "world" in it. It's a, a world federation of. Uh, it is light workers, but I'm not sure what it's called. So uh, there are different federations up there, and yeah. they they talk to each other. Are they unified? Not very much. They like like a mess. Arcturians are one of the centers uh, around which it, it revolves, but uh, the Galactic Federation of Light Workers. Uh, uh, it is a very loose federation. There is, um, uh, how to say, there is not that many of them, but uh, they are very devoted to health and earth. Uh, we, we discussed that uh, about three months ago. There was uh, people from there jo uh, showed up and we asked them questions. They described the numbers, how many of different races participate there. So Federation of Light Workers coordinated uh, Co cooperate with Gurfitnir, but uh, because Gurfitnir is very secretive, well organized, well structured, uh, it, they're positive, but they have enemies, so they have to be like they, they're in state of war with reptilians. So they and are. In do they have Yael? Is Yael part of their? Yeah, yeah. Yael is Gurfitnir, yes. Yeah. Gurfitnir is Yael, Pleiadians, Lirans. But I know that everyone is. Uh, is uh, Friend of yes. Yeah. And everyone is uh, is have voted to to let uh, Yael be the yes, first yes. one to yes. come down. Are all the federations uh, on that? Well, did they all make the, the, the decision? Yes, I I think they're in agreement. But there was a uh, someone that said that there. Uh, we're supposed to be a first contact April fifteenth, and Grick mm -hmm. here didn't knew nothing about that. So, and it didn't happen. So it was that was from some other area, other species that weren't actually given permission. I guess they were blocked. So, uh, also, I mean, it's on Earth. It's kind of easy. It's uh, you know one one planet, one physical reality, one surface. So. We know which countries are here, and we still have a mess with politics, right? When you go to Gurkfitnir, uh, uh, it's four dimensional. It's again, it's not our dimension, and you have multiple timelines, and uh, there are federations that uh, go through multiple dimensions. It's a big mess. Uh, Zakaria speaks about lots of different uh, realities. So in one reality, it's one way; in other reality, it's another way, and all of them can kind of connect to us. So so it's not a single answer even. And some in I'm sure in some of the realities on April fifteenth there was a first contact, but mm -hmm. not here. It's certainly not, not in this reality where you right. and I are. Not right. in our reality. <laughs> well there was a uh, well they're they're saying twenty fifteen and they're not even sure we'll be ready. Oh, they are planning. They yeah. kind of changed their mind. Yeah, they 
Yeah, there's a lot of people that are ready, but a lot of people that aren't. But what what is important is even Buddha is one of the higher spirits. They don't know the complete future. They are playing the same game as we are playing here. We are playing in 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 a limited limited time where we you know we we can know on the now and the past. Mm -hmm. uh, our friends from fourth dimension they can know. To, to the evening, maybe to the tomorrow's evening, mm -hmm. and some of the most advanced, like Lirans, know a few days in advance, but they still, uh, they play the game, they agree to that restriction, otherwise, if they knew all the future, all the timelines, it wouldn't be interesting for them, they couldn't get an experience, so they all also know only part of the future, and Buddha says, he doesn't know his future, he's also in, you know, he's way more advanced spirit, and he also plays it one time in a time, and, uh, mm -hmm. So they can access some of the timelines, some of the future timelines, get the glimpses, but they don't know which, you know, we have free choice, so we can choose timeline, we can choose, make choices, and I, I'm making choices right now, and like, where I'm looking for jobs. I'm now looking for jobs in Buffalo, but a week ago I was looking in Toronto. That would completely change the mm -hmm. And I moved to Rochester only because I send applications, you know, at some point I decided I send applications only north. Mm -hmm. So you know, that, that's that's why I wouldn't I wouldn't go south of of Maryland, and uh, that was a decision. There was an interesting um, parallel reality recently, where a meteor uh, passed within our satellites, and uh -huh. by a fluke of chance, it missed every single satellite. It came in very very close, but on another parallel reality, it hit a satellite, and the whole of the all of the skies above will be a bit of a messy up there, and that's yeah. why we're now in this reality now because we're focused on progressing, getting ourselves into the right vibration, and trusting yeah. ourselves, and etc. Yeah, Gurk Fitnir is uh, working with higher dimensional creators, I guess, with creators, and the rules of the game are they are to avoid or uh, to prevent any big disaster, huge disaster, like no Third World War, no big atomic uh, exchange of, uh, you know, explosions, no big planets or meteorites hitting the Earth, no big volcanoes. So that is supported by the Creator. They want us to go through that. But smaller scale, where when we survive, at least a part of the race is survived, are permitted. So, so that's their kind of set of rules. They can play within that, preventing this and this, but and also there are reptilians interfering. So that's a, a game where uh, where big disasters are prohibited, but small disasters can happen. So so that's where uh, that's how it works. Well, let's give our blessing. Oh, please, yes. Yes. <laughs> Goodbye and blessings. I just pray that we unite in integrity, love, honesty, goodness, and joy. Bring the truth to the earth with love and light, joy and growth in our vibrations. I just wish everyone love and a good connection. Talk to summer. Love, light, and joy. Thank you very much, Spirit Creator. Your guides, higher self, Mother Earth, Father Sky. Thank you, everyone, for being part of the light here today and part of the truth and honesty and grounding that we need to survive. I wish all of you a great day and a great life. Much love. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.